Hi everybody, I'm Bree the Plant Lady here with a weekly garden update. We have just come out of three nights of freezing, so I'm excited to show you how the garden fared. Also, happy April and happy Easter. It's the first Sunday of April, and we are in the season where everything is really coming back to life, even if it was frosted over the last few days. So let's get out into the garden and get touring. So this is one of my favorite sort of surprise combinations. That's a native sassafras that just seeded in to this border of blueberries. You can see here is the sassafras trunk right here, planted really close to a blueberry right there. Now notice at the base of the blueberries are Chandler strawberries and they're all starting to flower. And this is a really great combo because I get double the amount of food production from this square footage. And these are all perennial. So it's just a really great way to utilize all this square footage. Now I've definitely noticed that it looks like some of the strawberries have been munched on. And I think that's probably rabbits. So I need to come out and spray uh, rabbit repellent this afternoon because man, they are in full force and they are having babies. You can see the blueberries. This is my favorite variety, powder blue. It's just covered up in different, different species of bees and other pollinators. And um, this is what's gonna ensure that I have a good blueberry season. I think I have 28 cultivars, so there's a lot of cross-pollination happening across the garden with various varieties. Remember, blueberries have to have more than one variety in order to set fruit. They are self-incompatible. This border in front of the figs, which the figs totally got nipped, but notice that the cauliflower, broccoli, cabbage, none of that stuff took a beating at all. Like it actually appreciates 28 degrees. However, the um, potatoes that were growing really vigorously didn't like it at all. I mean, look, look at that. They're gonna come back, no problem. But, you know, I was a little surprised to see how uh, beat down they were. I'm glad I brought my two really big bags in. Now these ones, because I just covered them, they look fine, they didn't really get frosted. See, so this is where it really pays to have plants at different growing stages. You see these, again, did get nipped because I hadn't covered them with um, a fresh round of compost. But everything that I planted a few weeks ago, all the cool season stuff is totally fine. Again, here in the greenhouse, cool season vegetables, totally fine. Thankfully, none of the peppers had germinated, so they just stayed out here. And this tray of tomatoes, which I got from a friend from NC State, were living in the kitchen. <laughs> And today I'm actually gonna pot these up. I'm gonna do a video to show you how best to pot up tomatoes that are kind of long and leggy when it's still too early in the season to put these in the ground because the ground is way too cold. There is zero benefit to putting tomatoes in cold soil. So I'll be posting another video on what to deal with tomatoes that you started too early. Again, you can see none of these cool season vegetables were harmed in any way. They not even, not even brown at all. Like the poppies and larkspur didn't skip a beat. Totally fine. And then if you remember, I was super disappointed because my tomatoes had like just germinated the day that the frost was going to hit. So I put them all in the garage and today I got them out got them watered. I actually uh, fertilized them with fish emulsion. You know, they're really small, but that, that dose of fish emulsion will help boost them up a bit. And I'm pleased to see the germination rate so far. This is, you know, what summer is going to be all about. Now across the way here, I've seen some people make comments, especially on Instagram, about Edgeworthias getting nipped that were pushing out foliage. And this one did to a degree, but you can see this is a really protected zone because this plant is, you know, again, I did not plant this here. That rooted in in a pot that I was gonna give to somebody. 
um, but it's this special little corridor. So this tends to be a warmer microclimate. Along the woods edge, this ajuga is starting to bloom and it is so pretty. I really kind of don't respect ajuga as much as I should because it doesn't require anything. And you know, pollinators love these flowers. There's a bee over there. I don't know if you can really see that. Um, gosh, they're so charming when they flower. I, I need to use more ajuga in the garden. And you see, these Edgeworthia are leafed out a lot and they didn't get damaged. And that's because, you know, they're in this understory where I don't think that frost settles as easily. I think we got down to 28. So in theory, these should be black, but I think it's the placement. So I'm gonna take you on a path that doesn't actually exist yet, that I have some work to build because I, I may have had a compost pile at one point. So I have a lot of stuff to move. But it's just incredible to see how much everything has started growing. These are all Solomon Seal. And everything that I planted in this bottle edge is growing out really well. See the hydrangeas got a little bit nipped, but that's no big deal. We were really fortunate. Uh, we did have like a thick frost layer on our cars and stuff. You know, some plants are showing more damage than others, but nothing's like killed back. It's nothing like the Easter freeze of 2007 that just like rocked the nursery industry. It was so sad. So this border has grown a lot. It's still really messy. I need to get in and weed it. At least I need to weed the edge. Like, look at this edge here, it looks crazy. Compared to where I actually did come through and hand weed. You know, it's gonna take me like five minutes, I just need to do it. And I love this viburnum. I'm gonna do a separate video as a viburnum tour for all of you, um, in part because I've got to find the labels. This is, I'm sure, a Berkwoodii type. And I think it's from first editions, but I don't remember the cultivar name, so. I have some work to do before I can make that video. Now the Larkspur is really starting to pop. Like you see how this has elongated. So we're really in the countdown for this spring show to get started. I'm more than excited about it. So if you're not familiar with North Carolina, you might not understand what we talk about when we when we talk about pollen season, but it's crazy. Like it, we did not have this in Michigan or in Indiana at all, not compared to North Carolina at least. So I cleaned my feed tank pool yesterday and look at all of the yellow film that's developed in less than 24 hours. Like I did this last night at like six o'clock. So uh, there's so much pollen in the air. It's, it's covering like all the leaves. Um, it's hard to tell. Everything is just like a dull, dusty yellow. And um, it's like you can't have your windows open. Like my, my cell phone screen right now is totally covered in pollen. <laughs> uh, it's just like unlike anything I've really ever, I've been here, this is my 19th spring. I'm used to it, but I'm still always caught off guard by it. So the barley, I am stoked. The barley this year is awesome. You see it planted here in this feed tank and I have it here in this pot. I actually have it in all of my containers. And by the way, I've had a lot of questions about the containers and I didn't mean to confuse you. I only plant rice in pots with no holes. All the rest of my containers have drainage holes. So there's no trick to it. I use pots with holes in them for most of my plants. It's just rice. And I'm not gonna do a rice demonstration until later because it's too early to plant rice. So don't rush the season. Remember, actually plant for spring and enjoy spring. Summer is long enough and it will be here before you know it. Well, this Forsythia finally finished. I still haven't come up with the name. But look, the Lunaria or the money plant has started blooming and I'm just really, I just love this plant. I, I can't help it. Reminds me of my childhood. 
and you see all of these larkspur have really elongated and I am in love with this cute little variegated phlox. Um, this is a phlox de varicata and I know there's a label in here but I haven't been able to find it. But I think my friend Peter Van Risen introduced this or is introducing this and so hopefully he will see this video and give us the name. So uh, I went to Home Depot yesterday because I needed wood glue and I of course ended up buying some plants but man it was sad. It's so many dead or like severely frost bitten warm season annuals and people were buying them and they look terrible. Clearly it's too early but people just don't know better and it drives me crazy because I want people to not keep making bad decisions. But they did have some cool season annuals. Not a great selection, but I got a few things. All of these pots, some of these got a little bit burnt, but that's okay, I can just cut those, those leaves off the Swiss chard. But for the most part, you know, we were just really, really fortunate to not have any real significant damage from the frost. And you can see here, my barley is starting to put out its flowers. Um, so far, it's it's just still in, in specific zones, but this front entryway is just bright and cheerful. And actually, like a delivery person came and was like, oh, I love your walkway. <laughs> and it's, it kind of makes it all worthwhile <laughs> when a stranger gives you a compliment. <laughs> And I've been making a lot of flower arrangements from this area and also harvesting a lot of salads. There's a, a whole lot of edibles in this mix that are delicious and nutritious. So we're at that time of year where I start to think, oh my gosh, this garden is getting too shady. <laughs> this was full sun, y'all, when I planted it. Um, these trees are 10 years old and they're casting significant shadows now and that isn't ideal for these sun-loving grains that I am so devoted to growing. So um, yeah, <laughs> just I guess I'm just saying that for the record. I definitely cannot grow full sun plants out here in the summer anymore. So I have to find a different plant palette to get excited about. So the viburnums are really starting to pop open and it'll probably be a little later this week when I do the viburnum tour, just because you can see some of the species haven't really started to open yet. But this viburnum macrocephalum is just magnificent. It's one of my all time favorite plants for the spring. And it always is blooming for my birthday. So I like to think of it as my Aries birthday flower. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this Sunday garden tour. I hope you have a safe and happy Easter, and I look forward to sharing an update next Sunday. Thank you so much for watching, everybody.